Good afternoon, and I am Vikram Gore. This is Market Smalls and Machines. If there's a phrase I'd use to describe last week's financial markets, it would be the summer of George. Yes, a very technical one. Now, if you're fans of Seinfeld as I am, you'd recall the summer of George is the time when George Costanza decides to do everything opposite. Last week, when there was a blue wave expected in Congress, I thought the market would tank. No, nope, opposite. When our capital was under attack, I thought the market would tank. Opposite. I thought the market would give up the gains by the end of the week. Instead, it went on to record highs. Opposite. Well, we can keep talking about it, but it's time for us to get on with the show. In today's show, we'll cover three things. What is my biggest concern in 2021 and 22 as far as the financial markets are concerned? Secondly, we'll look at what a cash strength single malt is. And third, and certainly not the least, it's an affordable Porsche, if there is such a thing. Now let's get on with it. Uh, one of the key macro uh, trends that we talked about in our very first episode was that of inflation. And what that does is essentially it makes the value of fewer hard-earned cash lower. So let's let's take a look at why I, I am particularly worried about inflation and then what we can do to, to counter it. So first and foremost, like we said in the first episode, there's been unprecedented amount of monetary and fiscal stimulus. Now the difference this time around compared to 2008-2009 is at that time, that stimulus was predominantly monetary, i.e. it went into assets, government or bank assets, and it just stayed on as reserves uh, instead of impacting the velocity of money in people's hands. This time around is slightly different. You also have fiscal stimulus that is checks directly going into people's hands that then gets into circulation, increasing the velocity of money, and as a result, you know, having available dollars to be spent. Okay, so that's number one. Secondly, because of COVID, there has been a challenge to actually spend the money you had. Where would you spend it on? Concerts? Restaurants, travel, nope. So the savings rate last year has been really high. So you've got that, not only that you, some folks who needed it, absolutely, but also you've got some folks who uh, didn't need the extra cash, but have savings on hand as a result of COVID. So that's the second factor to think about. The third factor to think about, the flip side of it as well, is when you don't spend as much, the overall level of credit card debt tends to drop. And that's also what was seen last year. So it also means people's ability to go beyond what they have saved and then spend more has also been extended as a result of low credit card debt. And you couple all of that into the fact that there is pent-up demand today uh, due to the causes we talked about earlier, the inability to spend the money you have. So when the economy opens up, when people get vaccinated, and when people, the overall infections reduce, guess what's going to happen? People are going to want to go out and spend the money they have, be it travel, be it purchases, whatnot. So all of that, for me, it is it directly links into an increase in inflation, the likes of which we haven't seen for uh, at least the last decade after TARP came out, but probably for a few decades. So that's the issue driving inflation. Now let's take a look at what we can do about it in order to protect our portfolio from inflation. So our first line of defense for inflation are tips. Treasury inflation protected securities. 
Now, these are treasuries where the principal uh, increases if inflation happens or decreases if deflation happens as measured by the consumer price index. And the interest percentage you get, which is paid twice a year, is on that principal. So in effect, if inflation happens, your principal goes up, so you actually end up getting more interest as a result as well. So that's been the historical uh, protection or hedge against uh, inflation, which is tips. Okay, that's, that's the first level. Then moving on, obviously, to gold and precious metals. Uh, now, a few things to think about here. Uh, traditionally, gold has been the safe haven uh, when it comes to uh, protecting yourself against inflation. Uh, more recently, and we've we'll talked about this uh, in previous episodes, it's been under pressure um, uh, due to Bitcoin and some alternatives. But nevertheless, uh, precious metals and other metals along with gold have historically provided you protection against inflation. Uh, other metals to think about uh, could be metals such as silver, uh, but also perhaps others such as copper, uh, which may also find its way into potential increase in prices as a result of uh, growth, i.e. copper required for more growth, uh, and uh, in the electrification macro trend. So something for you to think about, gold and other precious metals as the second lever to manage against inflation. The third is obviously uh, commodities and materials. As inflation happens, commodities and materials tend to get pricey. Uh, by commodities, you know, a whole host of things in there, right? Going from your food uh, all the way to chemicals and then also materials um, and also energy. Right. So there's a few things there you want to consider. You know, typically, I think about it in terms of ETFs. There's a couple of ETFs that can give you exposure to both. One being the XLB, which is the materials ETF, and the other being the XLE, which is the energy ETF. So something there to think about and add as a potential hedge against inflation. And then last but you know, more recently, certainly not the least, is uh, something that's an alternate store of value, which is Bitcoin today. Nobody really knows how Bitcoin is eventually going to play out, but you know, there is enough hypotheses out there that say capital allocation is moving from gold to Bitcoin, even if it's slow. So that's one thing to think about. But the other is maybe also, we, we touched on this other in a, another episode, which is something like an uh, investment in art. Uh, the bottom line there is you want to have some things that are not correlated, if you will, to the stock market and, and hence have some level of protection against uh, any, any inflation or for that matter, a drop in the stock market. So that, those are the different uh, levers available to you. Now, obviously, there's different level of risk associated with each of them uh, to manage the portfolio. Uh, in general, you can consider this as a the tips being on the low end of the risk spectrum and Bitcoin being on the high end of the risk spectrum with gold and commodities being in the middle. So take a look at it. Uh, do your own research if you need to. If you have questions on any of these, feel free to uh, let us know and be happy to tackle them in upcoming episodes. In our last episode, we covered the Speyside region in Scotland. Now, before we move on from there, uh, I'd like to cover a particular term in Scotch. I use that term in relation to A.D. Rattery, which is an independent bottler. And I got some questions around the term cast strength. Okay, so in today's episode, I'd like to hit pause on the Scotch regions and just cover cast strength in detail and talk a bit about it. Personally, the cast strength scotch is my favorite type of scotch. So let's take a look. So what is cast strength? Well, before we talk about cast strength, let's, let's just get a sense for the overall process and the different alcohol percentages through that process. Okay. So first of all, you know, 
after a scotch has been distilled and aged, it's alcohol by volume, the ABV. You typically see that expressed as a percentage on the bottles. It's usually much higher than the 40 to 43 percent you typically see on the bottles. So the bottles on the shop shelves have usually been watered down slightly. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. But let's just move through the process to understand why and how this works. So immediately after distillation, a scotch whiskey actually can be anywhere between 60 to 75 percent ABV. But then before being placed into casks, the scotch actually gets diluted to around 60 plus percent ABV, um, so a lot of times 63, 64. And from there on, the whiskey soma at the distillery typically determines the level of dilution and hence the ultimate flavor profile for the whiskey that actually goes into the bottles. So it may go anywhere from that 63.5% to 40 or 45 or 50% uh, ABV uh, by the time it gets to the bottle. So that's how a high 60s alcohol content gets dropped down to the 40s that goes into a typical scotch bottle. Now, the whiskey that is bottled directly from the cask that it matures in is essentially cask strength, and that has the higher alcohol content than you would otherwise see. Usually that can be 55% plus, but I've seen them at 60, 62%, and they're pretty strong. Uh, now, the reason for that is by doing so, it allows the drinker to dilute the scotch to their tasting as necessary. Okay, in some cases, uh, namely myself, um, I don't dilute it at all. Uh, on the other hand, I take some water on the side and I alternate between the scotch and the water, and it tastes fantastic. Now, let's move on to our machine segment. In our first episode, we showed you the Maserati, which was a used car on sale for about $47,000. It's certainly a fun car. It is quick and it's got a flair to it. Now, I did get some hate mail from some of my friends who swear never to touch that car with a 10-foot pole, mainly because of the expenses associated with owning and maintaining that car. So this time around, we wanted to show you a car that may not be as expensive but hey, when it comes to luxury cars, you better know what you're getting into. So this time around, we would like to show you a Porsche Panamera. From my experience, the Porsches are one of the best used cars you can buy. So let's take a look at it. So keeping with the four-door saloon or executive car trend we've got going from the Maserati, here's a look at the a four-year-old Porsche Panamera. Now you got it's got forty two thousand miles, and for a Porsche, that is low miles. Uh, Porsches are meant to be driven hard, driven long. The harder you push the engine for a Porsche, the better the car drives. I can speak from personal experience; it is just brilliant, right? Now the the other thing about Porsches is the handling. I it will be hard pressed to find other cars that handle as good as Porsches do, especially when turns. You know that's that's why I'm a comment in the last episode about driving through you know, the the Malibu Canyon Road, right? You know when I push my Porsche through there, it just knows where I want to go, and the response is immediate. So if you're if you're looking for driving pleasure, there's no better car, a driver's car, than a Porsche. So that's just one thing to think about. Now, when we scroll down here for this particular one listed on True Car, um, you obviously you see the red painted brake calipers. It's a stunning looking car. This design wasn't that popular, uh, and and when you, when you look at the Maserati, you know from a, a purely aesthetic standpoint, the Porsche doesn't come close to a Maserati, but uh, from a handling standpoint, I don't think any other car comes close to a Porsche. So you got to pick what you want and go with that, right? So when you look at this, this is a base model, you know, the options level are standard. So you have to always ask for the sticker price for the car uh, when it was originally sold. 
so you can do a quick a in a right apples to apples comparison uh, rather than look at this car and say well this is 46000 looks cheaper compared to another used car same year same model um, but I may have a lot more options and hence might be going for a higher price. So make sure you look into that. And then the, you scroll down, you'll see the auto check vehicle history report. I mean, obviously, no accidents reported, clean title. Um, in this instance, you have to buy this auto check report. You know, they say you save 20%. There are many websites that will make um, these reports available for free, but in this instance, that's not the case uh, for this one. And you know, when you think about going back to the buying guide from our last week's episode, you'll see you know these guys are uh, referring to a few things, and one of them is this extended service plan that they offer. And apparently, this particular car has been pre-qualified for an extended service plan for additional 100,000 miles. But then, you know, the upgraded equipment like wheels and tires are extra. So, you know, this is something you may want to get a good level of detail on just via phone before you go there. So you know going in what will be offered to you, whether it makes sense to you or not. In, in most instances, having an extended plan or a warranty of sorts is usually advisable. So that's so that's the that's the Porsche uh, used Porsche for a forty six thousand dollar price. And obviously, you'll have to negotiate that with the dealer. But it's on True Car. Another one of the options that's available for you, and that maybe in the past you didn't think was accessible. Tell us what you think of these two cars in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. And also, if there are other cars that you've been curious about but wasn't sure how to go about getting and buying them. Now it's time for our conclusion. Well, that's our show for today. Please leave us comments in the comment box below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And let us know what topics we can tackle for you in our upcoming episodes. If you have any questions or comments that you don't want to leave in the comments box, you can certainly email us at marketsmallsmachines at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter market smalls and machines that's where you'll be able to get in depth into either of the used car sales or auctions or specific distilleries or for that matter detailed financial uh, tweets from financial experts do give us a look have a great week and we'll talk to you soon